I show speed created this problem for herself. There was a riot. He caused it. A scholar of Islam, a Muslim extremist. Deportation is the answer. And now people are going to say, Amla, you sound super Islamophobic. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. If you're watching this video and it's the last time, please pause it and go pray and come back when you're done. Please check out the description section of this video to support the channel. I was sent a recent live stream by a channel member where a lady named Amala Iqpanobi was spewing some hatred towards Muslims and the religion of Islam. She started it talking about illegal immigration to the West, but that quickly turned into her just doing some plain old-fashioned ignorant Muslim bashing. She even used a very popular streamer Aisho Speed's recent appearance in Norway to get her very Islamophobic point across. The irony being, of course, that Aisho Speed claims to be a Muslim and is quite pro-Palestinian. Let's take a look at the first clip. The West has an immigration problem. And people don't want to hear that because apparently it's xenophobic. Apparently it's Islamophobic. It's not just the US dealing with it. It's the West in its entirety. The number one name for in the UK for baby boys right now, guess what it is? Guess what the number one name is? Mohammed. Where the hell did that come from? I show speed. He went to Norway and was attacked by a mob. I show speed is surrounded by a mob of mostly young men who I guess are fans of the, his and they gave him a very aggressive, almost attack like greeting. This is specifically in Oslo. And I just want you to take a look at all the different all the different guys there. Get a good look at the crowd. Now again, try to get a good look at the crowd here. Look at, you know, how old these people are. Look at what they look like. Yeah, Amala, like you said, look at what the immigrant guys look like. The answer is, they look like you. Amala seems to have a problem with the most popular boy's name in the UK now being Mohammed. Pretty ironic when her first name is Amala, which is an Islamic name. And her surname, Ekpunobi, is West African, which is a predominantly Muslim region of Africa. So stop talking like your name is Jane Smith. In fact, Amala is a Trump supporter, yet her name rhymes with Kamala. Just saying. And keep your nose out of our business in the UK. UK. Muslims are four to five generations deep in Great Britain. A lot of those babies named Muhammad are British nationals, as are their parents and grandparents. Yes, of course you sound Islamophobic, because there are many types of immigrants in the States, from Latin America, Asia, India, etc., majority of whom are not Muslims. Yet you chose in your near two hour long stream to target mostly Muslims and very briefly mention other demographics. Let's look at the next clip where Amala compares Norway to Poland in terms of how Aisho Speed was treated. And he didn't have this experience in other countries that he visited. There's more clips of him in Poland, people being very respectful, thousands of people gathering, of course, but allowing him to have his space, to talk to everyone, to get hugs and handshakes and all this good stuff. What do you think is the difference between Poland and Norway? What did the difference look like in those crowds? And now people are going to say, Amla, you sound super Islamophobic. If you look at who the people are who were standing in the crowd, it looks like a lot of, I'll, I'll be quite frank, first generation immigrants. And we know the difference in politics in Norway and Poland. Norway is very open, free. Oh yes, let's let people uh, in into this country as so long as we educate them and give them some sort of pathway to assimilate. And Poland sort of takes a much harder stance on that and saying, no. Also Norway, of course, shares its space with Sweden, which has been very liberal in its allowance of immigration into the country. It's very similar to what's happening in the West in general. And a lot of people will say I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. I show speed created this problem for herself. He showed up in a place and knew people were going to gather and knew that there was going to be some sort of a riot essentially in his name and, and he caused it. And of course, we're moving from the I show speed stuff to things like uh, issues with the way uh, immigrants will demean women or how they view women, which when we compare places like uh, the Middle East and in the and and all, all these other countries to the West, there's definitely a difference in uh, where we've gone with women's rights. This lady definitely has an agenda. Firstly, she just somehow happens to know what someone's religion is by looking at a video clip of them. By some miracle, she was able to predict that all the brown and black people in the Norway I Show Speed clip were Muslim. She also used I Show Speed's appearance in Poland and their strict no immigration policy to try to present Muslim immigration as being the problem. Well, Amala, I Show Speed also appeared 
appeared in a number of other countries with relaxed rules on immigration whilst touring, including the UK, and those appearances were just as incident-free as his Poland appearance was. So the point you made is invalid. She also referenced Norway and Sweden as being super liberal and Muslim-friendly, when in reality the most infamous, frequent and recent Quran burning incidents have happened in those two countries. Hence, Norway and Sweden are not safe havens for Muslims as she paints them as. Amala in her other content brags about not being a leftist or not being a feminist, but in the clip she sounded like a total liberal, especially when she spoke about how people from the Middle East and India view women. Firstly, the Middle East and India are totally different. The Middle East is Muslim, India is majority Hindu. Secondly, India is very dangerous for women, and the Middle East is actually safer for women than the USA and the UK are, especially in the Gulf region, but more about that later. And when it comes to objectifying and demeaning women, the West promotes OF models and women doing pornography. It doesn't get much more demeaning than that, whereas in the Middle East and even Indian parts promote female modesty. Let's look at the next clip where Amala continues to paint Muslim immigrants as uncivilized savages. I'm going to show you uh, this class that they do in Norway, where they bring together immigrants to sort of teach them before they, you know, go out into the world with the different prejudices of their their culture that they came with. You are here now in Norway. This is reality here. In our values, in our... Look at the graph. At some point, you're going to have to introduce them to Western values, and maybe this is the easiest way to show people. Men and women equal in our country, in our land, women not below the thumb of man, women equal to man. Our families, in our marriage, why do I stay with my husband? Because he is controlling me? Do you think that we have some difference between these girls? Because it's not easy if you are used with another uh, culture, another way of dress. So you're saying we shouldn't stare at women in short dresses? But equally, some Norwegians look at women who wear very traditional hijab and assume they're ignorant and backward. We have to learn, but they also need to learn about us too. <laughs> Y'all, forgive me in advance for this. Okay, if you left your country to come to somewhere like Norway, you take on the culture of that place. The culture of that place does not take on yours. You leave the stuff you left behind and then you come and learn from the place that you've now moved to. So this whole idea that people can just move into your country and bring all the garbage they left in their country to your country is insane to me because these cultures are gonna mix and meld and one's going to overtake the other, particularly the more violent, totalitarian and oppressive one is going to take over the other. Deportation is the answer to <laughs> the problem. By now it's clear Amala is using her apparent dislike for illegal immigrants as a ruse to disguise her actual disdain for Muslim immigrants. What's also ironic is that Amala talks about immigrants like immigrants are not part of her own heritage. It's very likely that either her parents or grandparents were immigrants themselves. And once again from her name, they may have even been Muslim immigrants from Africa. So Western culture isn't entirely your culture like you're boasting about. You also adopted it. And as far as equality between men and women goes, the Quran preached this 1400 years ago, way before the West even knew about the concept of gender equality. The Holy Quran states, whoever does good works, whether male or female, and is a believer, are equal in the eyes of God and shall enter heaven. In fact, Islam is the only religion that gives women the right to an education, property rights, the right of inheritance and freedom of marriage and divorce. Similar rights were not available to women in Europe and America for many centuries after the advent of Islam. The Muslim brother that Amala showed in the clip who spoke about respect for women being a two-way street was spot on. As you saw, he agreed that men should lower their gaze if they see a half-dressed woman in the West. But he also said that Westerners should not make ignorant assumptions about Muslim women wearing a hijab in the West. Amala did not agree. She thinks Western people don't have to tolerate the hijab and only women that dress provocatively should be tolerated. Maybe because she dresses quite revealingly, it hit a nerve. She seems to think that all hijabi women are immigrants. Newsflash, sweetheart, many European and American women with Muslim roots who were born in the UK, the EU and the USA 
wear the hijab. We didn't leave anywhere behind. The West is our home. We added to the culture, just like many other ethnicities have done. For instance, in the UK, my Muslim great-grandparents helped build this country, and my husband's Muslim grandfather fought in the British Army in World War II. We don't need to learn Western culture because we're from here. We just fused and created a different flavour of the culture. Amala seems to think all immigrant culture is garbage, as she called it, and that the West is civilised and has it all figured out. And I will admit that some aspects of Western culture are positive. However, alcohol and drug consumption, promiscuity, liberalism, gender confusion and rainbow ideologies indicate that Western culture is also in need of repair and isn't as civilised as Amala is portraying it to be in order to justify her Islamophobia. Amala also seems to think deportation is the answer. It seems like she's pandering to far-right conservatives, some of whom think that all non-white people should be deported regardless of if they were born in the West or not. Hopefully they keep Amala around as she seems to be a good token person of colour that will serve them well. And as far as Amala's claim that Muslims have a violent and oppressive culture, Islam is a religion, not a culture. It spans across many nations and actually includes many different cultures. She must have forgotten about the violent and oppressive culture of the West that brought her ancestors to America in the first place, you know, through colonisation and slavery, and is still going on currently as we speak in Palestine. Let's look at the next clip. And this is in 2009, Christopher Hitchens giving a warning to the West in general about this idea of moral relativism, cultural relativism, that all things are really the same, that we are in no position to place judgment in a Western civilization on those who do not live in a Western civilization. They're not really regressive. Uh, it's just that they view life differently. And this is a lot of the way, uh, a lot of the language that you'll hear in relation to Islam here in the United States and in relation to other countries that have failed to make the same progress that the West has made. And when you criticize these countries or you criticize the ideas that are baked into the foundation of a lot of these places, you will get called a xenophobe and an Islamophobe. You will be told you can't complain because you're Islamophobic. The term is already being introduced into the culture as if it was an accusation of race hatred, for example, or, or, or bigotry, whereas it's only the objection to the preachings of a very extreme and absolutist religion. One of the things that is coming up over and over again um, is Islamophobia. And well, you can see the stats, you can see the numbers rising, particularly since October the 7th, although we shouldn't fall into the trap of thinking that before October the 7th, um, this was all heading in the right direction. It's been far too high for far too long. Islamophobia is intolerable. Uh, it can never, ever be uh, justified. Not the, the, the lack of support for, for women's rights. It's the Islamophobia that needs tackling. Meanwhile, they're ushering in a culture that will have no such tolerance for any of that language whatsoever. I was recently at a conference and there was an Iranian activist. She lives here in the United States now because she is no longer allowed to return to Iran because she will be killed for protesting the hijab and deciding that women should have the choice of whether or not to uh, cover up their hair and whether or not they have to uh, wear this religious garb. They have attacked her. They have attacked her family. She felt the need to point out that leftists would come to her speeches and come to hear her speak and accuse her of Islamophobia, saying that the hijab is just a is just a cultural practice. It's not something that is imposed upon women. And how dare she speak out against the hijab and criticize Islamic culture? This is where we are at. So Amala played a clip of some flabby Islamophobe I've never heard of and will not be hearing any more of in the future to state that Muslims and Muslim countries are regressive and not as advanced as the USA, as she put it. Somebody needs to tell this woman to travel more. Book yourself a flight to the UAE or Saudi or Bahrain or Kuwait or Oman or Malaysia or Indonesia and you will see firsthand how these Muslim countries are more advanced than the US, especially the Gulf nations. In fact, many people are leaving the West to settle in those countries and have formed large expat communities that love living there. I was quite surprised to hear UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer make positive comments about tackling Islamophobia, despite his ties to Israel. But let's wait and see how that pans out during the rest of his term. And once again, Amala, who is a self-proclaimed former liberal lefty, harped on about women's rights. I guess she just picks and chooses her leftism if it helps her out on being anti-Muslim. And do you guys, the viewers, notice how most anti-Muslim people use Iran as an example of some sort? 
Iran is a country in the Middle East with the highest level of people leaving Islam, a country that doesn't practice conventional fundamental mainstream Islam, and a country with a very moderate Muslim culture. Then Amala chooses to demonize the same lefties she agrees with on Western women's rights by saying they called her hijab-rejecting Iranian associate an Islamophobe. Amala blamed Islamic culture in her own words for her Iranian friend receiving threats for rejecting the hijab. Again, Amala, there is no such thing as Islamic culture. It's a world religion, not a culture. In fact, nowhere in the Quran or in any hadith is there prescribed punishment for not wearing the hijab. It is a sin that is dealt with between a woman and God. So Iran in no way, shape or form represents Islam as a whole. No country does. That's like saying Macedonia represents all Christians everywhere. In fact, in many Muslim countries like Pakistan, for example, which neighbours Iran, 50% of women don't wear a head covering at all and face no repercussions. Let's roll the next clip. You couldn't uh, move to the Middle East without assimilating. And I would love for anybody to try that and see how that goes for them. Yet we are like so, oh, free flowing about whatever anybody wants to do in this country. You raped a 12 year old? Oh, uh, you know, uh, 10 months in a juvenile facility because I feel like that's just your culture. Oh, you know, it's Islamophobia and we need to be multicultural and accept people of all different backgrounds and belief systems. Meanwhile, the girls are getting raped, cars are being set on fire, people are getting stabbed and uh, they're not contributing to our economy. I will stand like 10 toes down on if you're coming to a country, you fully assimilate, not this 75%, not, oh, but my, oh, but my religious beliefs really mean so much to me or whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to assimilate to the culture that you're coming to if you want to live here, because there's a reason that this culture has found its success in, in the success that you now want to enjoy. So you're gonna have to deal with it. And they go, oh, but my religion says I'm supposed to devalue women. Okay. I, I'm sorry. You mean to tell me? that a Muslim extremist threw acid in someone's face or like raped a 13 year old. This is not ideology or like a belief, a belief system that you want to be propped up in your country. Not everything's equal. Um, the people who are throwing acid in women's faces uh, because their pant leg lifted up and showed their ankle, the culture is not the same. The morals are not the same. The beliefs are not the same. A scholar of Islam. Uh, I'm gonna shut up. Let cool. me shut up. <laughs> Let me shut up. I'll save that for another video. Yeah. Another uh, video that no. never gets published because I'd be <laughs> beheaded. Again, a common theme with these anti-Muslim people is they cry about having to assimilate when they go to a Muslim country. And in the USA, people not having to do the same. What's that got to do with Muslims, Amala? Sounds like you need to write your government an email or a letter listing your grievances. The reality is, if you go to an advanced Muslim country as a Westerner, you can just about do anything you do in the West, as long as you keep it on the low. This ignorant woman is mad at her country for having light sentences for grape and stupidly attributed SAX crimes against children, violent crimes and damage of property to Muslim culture, as she wrongfully called it once again. I repeat, get in touch with your government and tell them to tighten up the laws lady because Muslims don't dictate US legislation. In Muslim countries that practice Islamic law, the punishment for rape is the death penalty and the same goes for fatal violent crimes. The West should take note. This woman is a bigoted idiot that makes ill-informed statements about the laws in Muslim countries and somehow correlates acid attacks against women with Islam. Let's be clear, people who do these types of crimes are not practicing Muslims whatsoever. In fact, compared to Saudi Arabia, the USA's rate of rapes of women is 90 times higher. So much for your civilized society. Let's look at the last clip where Amala and her co-host slash moderator totally contradict themselves by firstly describing their questionable relationships and then giving an example of a Muslim country's culture that the US should emulate to improve their own culture. You can't make this stuff up. My boyfriend is an immigrant. He's an immigrant into this country. I have like a long story which I've told a couple of times with my wife. I guess it became serious when we had our second joint birthday party together. We had gone on a few dates, but um, she was still dating this other guy. I was kind of still out there. We didn't have anything official. And it was kind of like this weird thing. She's like, hey, I'm going to invite this other guy unless you actually take me out on like a real date. There's a clip floating around X right now. There was a, a young girl um, who was raped by Syrian migrants, I believe, in mm -hmm. Turkey. And in response, they started like burning down the houses of Syrian immigrants and like doing all kinds wow. of crazy like retribution, which I'm not advocating for. But wow, what a stark contrast in, in cultural attitudes to uh, foreigners violating your daughters and 
posing a threat to their physical safety. I don't think people realize that that's where this leads, though. If your options are we fix the system, we deport, we get a grip, we build a wall or whatever, okay, that's one way to handle it. The other option is we do nothing. And it's not just like a takeover that suddenly happens and the cultures change or whatever. It is violent civil unrest. You see what's going on in our society and like our culture? It's awful awful to some of the things that we're like allowing. People are coming to our country for a reason, because of our culture. So firstly, in Islam, dating is haram. And it's hilarious that Amala's boyfriend is an immigrant. What a hypocrite. Hopefully he's not Muslim. Let's look at her co-host relationship as an example of their advanced culture. He said his now wife dated him while dating another man and was going to turn up to a party with that other man whilst he was dating her. And he just accepts this. Muslims don't engage in this type of degeneracy. Then these two geniuses talk about how a Muslim nation, Turkey, dealt with immigrants committing vile crimes in their country and how well they handled it. Guys, I thought Muslim countries were not civilized or advanced like the West. Stop contradicting yourselves, please. It really is embarrassing. Amala then ended the clip by calling Western culture, in her words, awful. Make your bloody mind up, lady. I have to conclude that she's consciously or unconsciously talking out of her rear end by parroting discriminatory ignorance that she hears in the echo chamber she crawls around in. My advice to anyone who wants to know more about Muslims and Islam, talk to a Muslim. There's two billion of us. We're not hard to find. Thank you for watching. Make sure to join my free Telegram group via the link in the description, where we as Muslims can speak freely and without censorship about issues like this and remember to like subscribe and become a channel member for access to exclusive content until next time inshallah jazakallah khair allahu akbar allahu akbar allah